You know, we've been spending the month of February here at the Way Family Church divulging and discussing in detail relationships. You know, relationships are very interesting and very strategic because every one of us in any sphere of our life deals with relationships. God is relational and the essence in which he sent Jesus, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 and 10, described to us that he desires first for fellowship, first for relationship. We've discovered that relationships are often like elevators. They will either take you up or take you down. As we've been discussing this series, we've been teaching out of Nehemiah. Nehemiah is a wonderful book about rebuilding. Nehemiah is a wonderful book about taking what has become rubbish and what has fallen apart to rebuild it, to reestablish it, and to reposition it for God's glory. And so Nehemiah has a call and has a, has a design plan from heaven to rebuild the wall. And it's interesting that in Nehemiah chapter 4, as the people were experiencing difficulty and weariness and frustration, that Nehemiah, by the unction and the leadership of the Spirit of God, positioned men and women to rebuild the wall according to their families. Yeah, that's right, their families. You know, God is a God of families. God is a God of marriage. God is a God of legacy. God is a God of generations. And the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 4, that God, that Nehemiah surrounded them by their families. And he says, do not be afraid of them. I want to encourage you and your relationships and your family and your marriage, that whatever is opposing you and coming against you, not to fear it, not to fear its threat, not to fear its opposition. For greater is God and greater is God's word and God's plan than that opposition that, that, that opposes you. And he goes on to say, remember, it's so important in our lives that we have a moment of stop, of selah, of pausing, to, comp, to, to, to consider and to recall the goodness and the greatness of our God. He says to remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, your houses. You know, I believe it's important and imperative, especially in this generation, in this hour, that not only do we position ourselves in family, but that we fight for our homes. We fight for our children. We fight for our marriages. We fight for our grandchildren. We fight for our brothers and sisters. The Bible says especially those of the household of faith. You know, because hell wants to divide and conquer. But God wants to connect and complement and enable His purpose to go forth. Real quickly, I want to share with you five things that relationships are intended to do. Number one, relationships are designed to first strengthen and empower. That's exactly right. God instituted relationships to strengthen our lives and to empower us. It's interesting that in Acts chapter 9, the Apostle Paul was being havoced by the Jews, and they were threatening to kill him. The Bible says the word got out to those friends around him, and at midnight, they lowered Paul down through an avenue to let him out and to go be what God's called him to be. Thank God for people who protect and who empower and who pray and who strengthen our lives. Godly relationships are divine to strengthen and empower us. Number two, godly relationships, relationships are designed to protect and to cover. Let's not be about bickering and judging and complaining, but rather let's, let's cover, let's protect. The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. Love is a covering agent. Love is a protecting agent. And so godly relationships are divine to cover and to protect. Number three, this is neat. Relationships are designed to complete us. Not to be in competition. Not to be in a competitive manner. Not to compete with one another, but rather to complete one another. That's exactly right. Husband and wife, you're not intended to, to compete, but to complete. Fathers aren't intended to compete with their children, but rather to complete their children. Wives aren't intended to, to compete with their spouses, but rather to complete their spouses. God intended relationships not for us to compete, not in the church to compete, not whose church is bigger, who has more money, who has more status. That is garbage. That is the work of hell. But rather to complete one another. You know, in godly relationships, you and I, we complete each other. Paul calls it the mutual faith. It's a beautiful thing. And then number four, real quickly, this is a neat thing, I'm sure you've, you've experienced this, that relationships are designed to, to challenge, to teach, and to cause us to grow. 
You know, the Apostle Paul talking to this Corinthian church said, Hey, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Meaning, let my life challenge you. Let my life cause growth. and Let, let me be used as an example, as a mere image in the earth. So, so divine relationships and godly relationships, and our relationships are designed to, to challenge us, to grow us, to teach us things. And number five, lastly, I love this. God, to prevent us becoming idols and self-sufficient, made us incomplete without each other. Therefore, relationships are designed to keep us balanced. That's right. We can't live alone. We, we can't make it. The, the Bible says we're one body but many members. That's how God intended us to be. Nobody can do it alone. Nobody is a star by themselves. No, nobody's an idol. Nobody's self-sufficient without Him and without each other. God made one body and many members. Why? So that we would keep all in balance. I pray you're encouraged today, and I, I just pray that your relationships are going stronger and stronger. They're vital to God, and they're vital to your destiny. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned and stay connected with what God's doing here at the Way Family Church. God bless.